Welcome, Welcome to, to Fun with, with Annuities, annuities where, where every single week I welcome a celebrity guest expert that can help you maximize chapter two of your life. Listen, learn, laugh, and love every minute of the most unique financial podcast on the planet. Let's get to it. Welcome to Fun with Annuities. I'm your host, Stan, the Annuity Man, America's annuity agent licensed in all 50 states, coming to you from sunny, hot Las Vegas, Nevada, where the home office is, and, you know, also from Florida. So thoughts and prayers to the people in Florida. My guest today is from Florida, and boy, we're so happy to have him on. I was telling someone the other day, and I get a lot of calls to have him back on. He's just busy, and I finally got his schedule to coordinate with ours, and, um, I always say that that he has the talent that Jim Cramer wished he had. Um, the fact that Martin Parlato is not Jim Cramer is one of the biggest travesties the world has seen, especially in financial journalism and financial um, thought leadership. So without further ado, Marty, welcome back to Fun with Annuities. Hey, Stan. It's good to see you again. Wish I was in Vegas. Wish I was in Vegas with you. <laughs> Well, it's not that glamorous, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't party. I'm an old dude. So, hey, let's one jump these, right in. I'm dying one of these, to. One, one of these days, I'm going to tell you my my uh, airline story about the time we flew over to Vegas and we met Coach Nate. It's a very long story, so I can't okay. tell it on the radio. Okay, okay. Well, Marty, I'm dying to hear your your take on everything. So, I don't know where you want to jump in. I wrote down inflation, the Fed, markets, crypto, Stanley Drunken Miller. Uh, Jeremy Siegel, where do you want to start? I can't wait to hear everything you have to say. My clients and listeners are like, holy crap, let's get to this thing, Stanley. Well, I just finished our radio show a couple of hours ago, and I started with Jeremy Siegel's rant last Thursday. Mm -hmm. Then I linked it to Judy Shelton's interview on CNBC. I think it was Monday or Tuesday this week. Mm-hmm. Then I wrapped it up with Kathy Wood's um, take on it. I think it was Monday or Tuesday of this week. And um, my show, I, 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 I'm absolutely livid at what the Federal Reserve is doing. Um, I went through each one of those columnists, analysts, wherever the hell, economists, wherever the hell you want to call them. And... <clears throat> These are either among the dumbest people in the world, including myself, or they're among the smartest and the Fed's got it completely wrong. I think the Fed's got it completely wrong. Um, Judy Shelton made maybe the most interesting point of the bunch. Judy was uh, Donald Trump's nominee for uh, Federal Reserve Chairman before Donald Trump weaseled out and reappointed Jay Powell because Donald Trump was too gutless to get rid of Jay Powell. And Judy says, look, the problem that we got is we're trying to get butts back in chairs, people back to work, people building things and doing things. And the Federal Reserve is saying that the only way to fix inflation is to cause higher unemployment so that people cannot skip from job to job to job, getting higher wages every time they move. She says it it makes absolutely no sense what the Federal Reserve is trying to do. And then we got the PCE numbers out this morning and the unemployment numbers out this morning. Mm-hmm. And it's an abomination it, to the point. And we have a client that used to be comptroller of the currency. He sends me an email saying, Marty, the numbers are rigged. These numbers are fake. They're whack. There's no, po- there's no possibility that these numbers, these economic numbers make sense. You, you listen to Kathy Wood at ARK Investments gasoline uh, oil prices are down to 25 year lows 25 year lows on oil prices and and and, and commodity prices of all types whether it's aluminum or copper gold or gold yeah it's just, it's just it, it's, ridiculous. and i don't know where the federal reserve's going and and you know we've got clients jumping out of windows, calling me saying, what do I do? What do I do? And I told him today, I finally sent out our message to our clients today. And I said, look, I got no more spin. There's just, there's just no more spin. Um, the last best chance that we have to turn this around is November 8th. 
And if we don't see something significantly bouncing by, by November 8th, then I don't think it's going to bounce because the Fed has said today, look, everything we're doing is wrong. Nothing we're doing has any effect, but uh, we're going to double down. We're going to do some more of it. So uh, that's what we've got. That's, that's the government that somebody elected, but it wasn't me. Inflation, inflation, inflation. I know everyone brings that up. They bring it up to me. I yell at people that have enough money to, to weather the storm. And, you know, people are kind of tired of me going, hey, if you call me with three to $5 million, and you start talking about inflation, I'm going to start yelling at you. Go where buy you, the where, eggs. Where, where do you see inflation? I, I, don't, I don't mean where do you see it going? Where do you physically see signs of inflation? For me, and, and that's a great question. That's what I always ask people. I think inflation is personal and customized, okay? And the way I look at it, I have two daughters that are no longer in the house. That means we don't no longer feed them. We no longer take them to dance. We no longer buy them clothes. We no longer do any of that. So that inflation uh, part is gone. I don't drive cars, okay? I fly back and forth and this and that. I, I mean, it doesn't really affect me. My wife coming from rural Nebraska, growing up in a trailer, God bless her, and been married to me for 35 years, will say, can you believe how much this grocery bill costs? I'm like, listen, we can afford it. Go ahead and buy it. Or can you believe how much? I mean, it's, it's personal. Now, yes, it's affecting the lower end. It always does. And my heart goes out to them. But for everyone else out here, if you're really looking to solve for inflation, someone's going to sell you a crap product that doesn't work, but they're going to tell you it does. Well, I, I don't see the inflation. And I'm like you. We don't have any kids at home anymore, so it yeah. doesn't matter to, to me. To me, I don't see it. Right. I don't see it either. You know, I don't drive enough. Yeah. You know, if I'm on a road trip, then I, then, I, then I have to do that. But I don't drive enough that it matters. My office is five, six miles from the house, and it's insignificant. Right. You know, I, I tell Linda, what do I, what do I care if milk costs 35 cents a gallon more? What would you rather have a job or a lower <laughs> price of milk? You know, exactly. and, and you look at certain things, you look at certain things like eggs, right? Well, we keep, we, we quit eating plain old generic American eggs years ago. We, you know, we we're Eglin's best family. So we we're already up in the, yeah, we're buying the $7 and, eggs, baby. Yeah, yeah, we're up to them $7 <laughs> chicken eggs. We, we don't even worry about those poor old everyday white eggs. Uh, well, but the, it's, this is a reflection of the media talking about it and not knowing what they're talking about. And then people call me up. And I'm like, are you really, are you really talking to me about inflation? Really? And I'm still, I'm still drinking, you know, 1099, a, a, a 12 pack Miller beer because I like it and it's cheap, <laughs> right? you know, and, and I can afford more expensive beer, but, but I don't see it. And you're down to 337 a gallon for gas in Jacksonville. That's very little more than 250 gas that Donald Trump had sure. when we were in the middle of a pandemic and you could drive from my office in Jacksonville to my office in Hilton Head and never see a truck or never see a car on the highway. So, so that's not a terribly uh, inflation. So, so where's the inflation? Well, the inflation is at Ford where you're going to get 60, 80, 90, $120,000 for F-250. Correct. And it's not it's not too many folks demanding one hundred and twenty thousand dollar trucks. No, it's that Ford can't find somebody to come in and make the component. They can't make the blue badges for the for the logo. And they said the company that makes the blue badges can't get people to show up at work to make the blue badges. Mm -hmm. And here you got the Federal Reserve trying to raise interest rates so that businesses that make blue badges for Ford trucks will fire their people. Will, will fail to give them wages to keep the wage prices down. So again, it's what Judy Sheldon said and what I've been saying since November. It's a supply chain, stupid. You know, go make more chicken eggs, go make more milk, go make more Oreos, go make more Ford pickup trucks. Quit paying people to sit home for God's sake. You know, this, this is just, this, this is just a catastrophe of bad government, just a catastrophe of bad government. And you're killing people. I mean, you 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 created another generation of people that hate the stock market. Your business ought to be doing good. I had a phone call. You know, I was looking for an annuity for one of our clients, and sure. I talked about it. Sure. And the guy tells me that over at Athene, they're talking ninety to a hundred days to book a MIGA. You send them a contract for a MIGA, they're out one hundred and twenty days to book a MIGA. I will tell you, without mentioning companies, that the the I always tell people that it's all about capacity with annuity companies. Okay, they could care less what J-PAL does. They glance at him, they yawn when he talks. 
And if they're getting enough money in, there's no incentive for them to raise rates. People say, well, why didn't they raise rates when, when Jay Powell raised? Because they don't care. They're getting so much money in, they don't care. They're reaching capacity limits. In fact, most companies are lowering their rates. Yes, there are some that raise them, and that's the reason that we represent all carriers and have all carriers out here that uh, if someone breaks out, we can get them. Hey, I want to talk to you about the markets in general. At the time of this taping, and and this is uh, we're taping about four days early from when you're going to hear it. Um, they're getting hammered here, Marty. Um, well, what did happen is this morning it was, it was just it was just terrible. I mean, the PCE came out, the the, the unemployment came out at below two hundred thousand. And you had every talking head from it, from the Fed, every single one of the talking heads came out and said, uh, we are not dissuaded. Uh, the United Kingdom is crazy. Uh, the United well, that's Kingdom. That's insane over there now. I, well, Japan's doing the same thing. Well, you know, I'm on the side of you. I'm on the side of the UK initially um, because you got you got the UK and China and Japan going, we don't want to be America. I, I think what's happening is. Those countries are saying, look, we don't want anything to do with Joe Biden. He's on his way out. Thank God, knock on wood, ding dong, the witch is dead. And he's going to be gone in six weeks. And we're not hitching our, we're not hitching our economic wagon to the United States. So in, in defense of that this morning, every one of the Fed officials came out and said, no, nah, no matter what they do over in the UK or Japan or China, we are, we are continuing on with quantitative tightening. And we'll see you in 2023. And if your family's retirement, if granny's retirement goes to hell, mm -hmm. uh, it's okay. Not our problem. It's not our money. And uh, it, it's, a, it, I got to be honest with you, clients are jumping out windows. They're going to cash. Oh, uh, absolutely, wrong absolutely. And, you know, I always tell people, don't, don't confuse my business model with genius. I just like contractual guarantees. I mean, yes. I mean, we are, we are rolling because people are, flying to safety and we're at a point now where safety can get you with a plus rated carriers over five percent so you know my my question is to a lot of people is, is that extra two to three hundred basis points worth the risk a lot of people it is but but it is a flight to safety here do you see that continuing where do you see the markets marty from a standpoint of volatility i know that you track things differently than other people that's the reason we want to have you on what do you what are you looking at here i think they're getting ready to break this thing um, okay. I, I've told our clients today, I had to tell them that the header of our morning commentary was no good news here. And I told them what I, 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 you know, every morning, two, three times a day, I'll send out a message to clients, try to be optimistic, but I don't have any more optimism in me. Um, the last, the last best chance that we have to fix this economy, uh, arrives on November 8th. You're going to get earnings that are coming out. You've got Apple down hard today. Rumors mm -hmm. that Apple's going to miss their numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have Micron announce earnings in a half hour. So they're obviously going to miss. You're going to have Nike report tonight. They could miss. If you start getting these earnings downgrades, if they turn out to be bona fide earnings downgrades, um, the last best chance that we have, the last catalyst we have is the election. And... Um, I don't think that's going to stop bond yields from going up. Um, I, I just, it's just, it's just not going to stop it. So, you know, you know. Let me, let me interject real quick. For the people that don't know who we're talking about, you better. His name is Martin Parlato, Marty Parlato to me. He runs a firm called Lighthouse Retirement. It is a boutique one-on-one -on -one private money management firm that if you don't connect with them, it's lighthouseretirement.com. Um, you should at least listen to what he's saying because he's one of the smartest people in the country and the most dialed in I've ever heard. And you, if you don't like the way he talks about it, then you don't like life. He is bringing it and it's raw and it's fresh and it's truthful and it's factual. And he doesn't give a crap if you like it or not. And that's why I like it. And that I, that's kind of the way I am. If people that know me out here, I mean, that's Marty. So um, I'll have a link on, on my site so you can get to him if you want to and, and listen. He's got a great podcast and radio show as well. You can listen to those recordings. They're fantastic. Um, in fact, I think the best market-based um, podcast and radio show in the country. Um, and if, I mean, that's, I, like I told him before we went on, I got a call the other day from, it's not even a client. It's just a guy that looks like he's going to be a client 
from Wisconsin. Marty's sitting in, in, in Florida. This guy's like, you got to have Marty back on. So with that, Marty, I want to go back. We talked about this before and you hammered it. You were right as rain, no pun intended, about crypto. Can you weigh in on the on the the gaudiness of what's happening here with crypto? I'll come into it. I'll come into it in a back door. I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna defend Jim Cramer because I'm a fan of the show and I'm really a yeah. fan of the interviews. But I will say, as it as it pertains to crypto, and again, Jim Cramer, I'll note that Jim did a show this week on Mad Money on his Mad Money show, where he attempted to um, divest himself from the issue of these uh, SPACs, which is, you know, not oh, the same thing. Oh, he hammered as, those. Explain uh, what hammered. a SPAC is to people real quick. It's a special special purpose acquisition fund. It's a, it's a blank check fund. So the, the I don't want to get the lawyers too ginned up, but the, <laughs> the loudest and most big mouth proponent of it was a guy <laughs> named Shamath Polyoptra, who you guys mm -hmm. have probably seen on CNBC. And I always say that whenever Andrew Ross Sorkin, who's a semi-effeminate male, is on CNBC, you should not watch that show. But Andrew Ross Sorkin <laughs> was, Andrew Ross Sorkin just loved dearly bringing Shamath Polyopter, or however you pronounce his name, on the show so that Shamath could uh, be portrayed as some great investor, but who was actually shilling SPACs all day long for over a year on CNBC. And Jim Cramer tried to come out and distance himself from it today, despite mm. the fact that Jim Cramer is so powerful over at CNBC that if he said, I don't want to go on the air if Shamath's on, they sure. would have pulled Shamath in a heartbeat. Oh, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so Cramer tries to distance himself from this whole SPAC thing. I think it was absolutely irresponsible to the point of being criminal the way that CNBC pumped and dumped SPACs and crypto absolutely criminal and i think when all of the i think when when the when the autopsy is done i think you're going to find crypto had a lot to do with this i and think throw, you're throw in non-fungible tokens underneath the crypto banner as well that was uh -huh. a joke from the start yeah and and you know the only the only spac that we ever participated in and i should have known it was a scam when i you know when i did it was donald trump's uh, his, his for for his you know his DWAC thing, sure. I, I should have known that was a scam just because it was Donald Trump. But you know, I, I look at what they're doing on CNBC, talking about some, and, and they can't get off of it. It's like they're addicted. They they they, they continually talk about these small stocks, Roku, um, you mm -hmm. know, stocks like uh, Peloton, constantly making headlines this morning they're talking about peloton signing the deal to sell to dick sporting yeah, goods or dick something I'm like goods. who cares who cares I mean, who I went gives over a to, crap how's that how's that affect my life i went over to dick's last week and to buy a jaguar shirt they must have had 12 different it's the most overpriced store on the face of the earth how it survives i don't have a clue but um um you know there's a lot of irresponsible reporting going on at cnbc and a lot of folks just like what's going on with this Apple story, okay? Yep. There is no way of knowing what's going on at Apple. But I will tell you anecdotally, my 18-year-old granddaughter who's in college and my daughter, uh, they all have brand new high-end, top-of-the-line uh, Apple iPhones. So uh, there must be some demand out there for the product. But who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> tell me, I want to hear your take on what Jeremy Siegel did. Because if... Go to go to Marty's site. He has the link to Jeremy Siegel. He sent that out today. Jeremy Siegel went off so factually on somebody the other day. Explain in in your terms and your the way you can do it what he was talking about. And Jeremy Siegel is one of the smart people in the room, by the way. Jer Jeremy, Jeremy's saying that look, uh, what what they're all saying, all of them. Um, Jeremy Siegel, Kathy Woods, uh, Judy Shelton. What they're all saying is that the key indicators that the Fed is looking at are unemployment and, and, um, and, 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 and inflation numbers, core inflation, Bureau of Labor and Statistics, core inflation. Those are lagging economic indicators. They and, are always, lagging. and always have been, always. Right. And 
the leading economic indicators, says Jeremy Siegel, are all saying that the economy is moving. You know, we, we're, we are technically without any doubt in a recession as of today's numbers. Sure. So, so what, what Jeremy's saying is all of these things that were true a year ago are true now, but the Fed didn't have any problem with them a year ago. Now, for some magical, mysterious reason, the Fed's gone and got religion, gone and found Jesus. And now the Fed wants to be this uber hawk on inflation. And then Jeremy's question is, well, if it was so important that you're going to crush the global economy now, why didn't you why didn't you try to crush it a year ago when we told you there were these signs of inflation? And the Fed's got no answer to that. But if you look at everything that all of these other experts tell you, the Fed's looking in the rear view window. The Fed's looking in the wrong place. Um, you know, look what's happening in the stock market today. You know, I might have to go back to buying plain old everyday white eggs. You know, I, I might not be able to afford a $200,000 Ford pickup truck. You know, people's discretionary money, vacation money, any kind of discretionary spending typically comes from the stock market earnings. They don't buy things if they don't feel good. Um, mm -hmm. I agree. That, that's what Jeremy Siegel was trying to say. And his question is, his point, his other point was, tell them to shut up. Just tell them to do whatever they're going to do, but shut up in the middle. Why, why are you making it so miserable on a day-to-day -day grind? Why are you people constantly running around on CNBC talking? Do what yep. you're going to do, shut up, and we'll talk to you next month. That's the end of it. And, and you know. They just work people up into a lather. It drives me crazy. Did you see what Stanley Drunkenmiller, Drunkenmiller said the other day? I didn't just, have a chance to watch. What he, it yeah, he watch. pretty much said that it's going to be really hard to make money in stocks in the next two years, ish. And, two and or ten. he said two, but interesting. You said 10. Why would you put 10 on there? I thought somebody said that uh, it was going to be 10 years before things got better, but you know, you know, at some point you get to, you got to see what the valuations are, yeah. right? You know, if you know, look, if you got the CEO of Ford saying we can't find people to make blue badges or doorknobs or whatever the hell the part, and he said the semiconductors are getting better. If you can't find somebody to make those components, you need to tell me why. Why, why can't you make blue badges for a Ford pickup truck? And, and and I don't understand that. Why why can't you get butts in the seat? Right. At work, um, Amazon's up to nineteen dollars an hour minimum wage, starting wage nineteen dollars an hour. Starbucks is pouring coffee at twenty two dollars an hour. So I was telling the clients last week, a lot of this wage, a lot of this wage inflation, is woke. It's woke. You got Charles Schultz, former CEO at Starbucks. He wants to pay twenty two dollars an hour. McDonald's is paying eleven. You don't think Starbucks could pay 15 and, and hire all the people they want? Sure they could, but they want to pay $22 an hour. Amazon wants to be the leader in minimum wage. They want to have better truck drivers, better warehouse staff than public. It's, and also CPS. good PR. It's it's yeah. easy PR. And, and it's easier than buying an ad PR firm. It, it but, just but is. It's not, it's not that they have to pay that kind no, of money. No, they don't. Pay. You know, no. most of the kids at, at at, at Amazon are not using the free college or the free healthcare. They're not, you know, they're 18 year old men. They don't use, they're not going back to college and they're not using healthcare. But so, so a lot of this wage pressure is really a symptom of how woke this society is and how profitable some of these companies are. Um, I promise you, I don't know what the wage is, but I promise you Walmart's not paying $19 an hour in their warehouses. I, I, I McDonald's is not paying $22 an hour to pour coffee. So, you know, if you got a job at Starbucks, God bless you, you know, congratulations. But $22 an hour at the Apple store? Come on, none of those guys are worth $22 an hour to sell you an iPhone. And uh, so I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know where the Fed, I, I don't know where the Fed comes down on all of this. I, I don't understand what this is going to do to fix the supply chain, which to me and Judy Shelton and Kathy Woods and Jeremy Siegel is clearly the problem. The supply chain is broken. We need somebody to go make more of everything that we consume, more of everything. 
And you know, how many how many supposed illegal American Ill, uh, aliens do we have coming into this country? Why we're not training them? Why these guys are not? I, I why they're? I promise you, every one of those illegals that come across the border will work at will work at Amazon. Yes, for half of I agree. I agree with that. Hour. I totally agree. You know, I don't know why they're not there. I don't know why they're not on the payroll. And I don't know if they're being counted because they're certainly getting jobs somewhere. Um, so I don't know if the Federal Reserve's counting them or not. Maybe, 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 maybe that's why the jobs number was so low today. I, it, it's a mess, and I don't know what the catalyst is. And you don't see the Republicans out there screaming that they're going to overturn Jay Powell or they're going to take any kind of different action. So, so I don't know where the cavalry is. It'll ultimately come. These companies will either make money or they will not be making money. So mm -hmm. if you get Apple and Apple misses its numbers, $130 could be the floor. If they make money, they could be back up to 200, which is where the target is in most cases. But are you still calling for the cryptos to continue their slide downwards and, and push down? I I wouldn't be surprised if 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 there's a major blow up somewhere in the world having to do with crypto that has to do with this bond, this bond market. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I still have no use for it. Um, I, you know, you know, I'd still rather have Apple than, than crypto. And I, sure. I barely want to have Apple right now, but. Um, I, I think when, when uh, Buffett came out and said, it, it, <laughs> I wouldn't spend $25 for all of the crypto available. That's what I, he I don't said. Know what, I don't know what Buffett's doing with Occidental Petroleum. I mean, yeah, he's taking that company. He's up almost twenty-one percent. Um, I don't know what he sees in Occidental Petroleum, another refiner. But um, and then and I'll tell you the other one that was interesting was it was important on the show today was who blew up these uh, oil and gas these gas pipelines? Yeah, in Russia. And uh, we played the video clip of Joe Biden saying it was going to be him. And I think it was Joe Biden. I think Joe Biden and the Ukraines blew up those pipelines. I, I don't see that there's anybody else that could benefit by blowing up those pipelines other than the United States and their stooge, the Ukraine. Um, what are I we doing over there, Marty? I mean, I, we keep I, I, sending so much money over there. He just sent another 12 or $15 billion. Yeah, the, uh, they wrote that into that last bill and nobody knew about it. It was like 13 well, that, that billion. That was how much they had to pay the Ukraine to blow up the gas pipelines, I think. Did you know that that was, a, that was a, just a carte blanche amount of money that they could do anything with? There wasn't anything the way that I understand it. It yeah. was like, here's $13 billion. Yeah, here you go. And, you know, we've been calling on the radio for all the Black Lives Matter people to get up and riot and go burn down the streets. Because when was the last time you spent 60, 70 billion dollars on black people? When was the last time you've been into a black neighborhood and built up the schools, built up the education system, put in some decent Internet, put in. When was the last time you went, you know, the schools in Jackson? How, how about Florida after the hurricane? How about yeah. 45 billion going into that? Yeah. How about that? So, you know, I, I you know. And that's another thing. Look at the inflation this hurricane is going to cost, you know, because what's going to happen. Look, look at yes. the wages. Look, look at what you're going to have to pay. A, 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 look what you're going to have to pay. A, when we were down in uh, Vero a few years ago, the last time we had hurricanes, 2008 or whatever it was, mm -hmm. you, you have no idea. They were they were they were charging fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to paint condos. And they would come in your condo, start it today, walk out tomorrow and go across the hall because the guy next door paid him $10,000 more than you were. Wait till you see what it's going to cost to paint those condos and those houses to put up sheetrock and all of that. Wait till you see the inflation numbers after this hurricane. And then the analysts are going to come in and say, well, those numbers were tainted by the hurricane. Oh, guess they were. I guess they were. Well, also, but, too, a lot of these legacy homes, what people don't understand is you can't rebuild them as is. You have to rebuild them under new code. Mm -hmm. And that is a complete disaster. We're trying to right now to do some upgrades on our house in, in Ponte Vedra. We can't find people to even work on it. Marty? I wouldn't buy a house in St. John's County except the one I live in. I wouldn't repair a house or build a house with the crooks, liars, and thieves in St. John's County for all the tea in China. <laughs> uh, we tried to buy a house. Listen, we're just so, looking for anybody. I'll actually take those guys and try to convert them if they can do work. I mean, it's. I mean, what's happening now is really interesting. And, and there are times that I look 
I go to stores and I go and then these type of things happen. I'm like, this isn't the country I remember, man. I don't, I remember being able to go to the store and there was all stuff was always there. Now, I don't know if the things I need are going to be at the store. I just don't know that anymore. And well, that's, that's weird. Fortunately, we're so old, we don't need very much. That so, is true. That so, is true. So I, I don't, I don't know, Stan. I mean, these guys down south are going to have, and then the bridges that are all destroyed, oh, the roads my. that are all destroyed down there. And yet, you know, but I, but hey, another $12 billion to get the Ukrainians to blow up the gas pipeline, probably uh, cheap at twice the price. Every time I see that's happening, I'm thinking there's people over there. There's like a 20 or 30 people inner circle that are just getting rich and they've got the Swiss out place and they've got the boat and they got, I mean, this is Russian oligarch stuff all over again, but we're funding it. How many people, how many countries do you think have the technology to go into the North Sea and tear up those pipelines? Two. Probably two or three. Yep, in the two. Whole world. United States, Russia, China, maybe France. That The only ones that got the equipment and, and the ability to do that. That's a and, good point. And, yeah, I mean, it just, it, it, I mean, those are not, those are not easy waters to navigate. So we're going to find out who did that. Well, I don't think we will. See, the fact that I always watch the news on how they're reporting it, the fact that that's not getting any run rate at all tells me that they don't want it to have run rate. It's getting no run rate. What they got was the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, everybody had it this morning. It's absolutely certain. Every country in the world now knows it's sabotage and says it's sabotage. Sure. Not one word about from whence the sabotage came. They don't Not want to dig into word. that. They don't want to dig into that. You, you yeah, and I they both... don't want to go down this road. So, Marty, what's what's making you happy? You're out there kicking butt. You know, you're smart as heck. What's 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 glass half full for Marty? Parlato. We, uh, we got our new Gemini Performance Portal up and running, which is uh, cool. Great for our clients. We got our new mobile app. It's on the Apple Store now. It's under Lighthouse Retirement. Okay. Um. What else? We got off our first cruise a couple of weeks ago and well over several years and didn't die. The Jaguars, Jaguars are making me happy. Unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> just you mentioned that it's probably going to, it's probably going to mess things up. If you were the Fed chairman, they just said, hey, you know what, Chairman Powell, we found a guy down in Florida that uh, was on the show and they made you Fed chairman. How, can you clean this up? And if so, how would you? I'd have to take a pay cut. I understand that. Marty, that's the reason. I, that's the reason neither one of us would do that. But let's just say you took the pay cut, you wore the bad suit, you hung out with Janet Yellen. What would you do? I'd say we were just kidding and cut the interest rates tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I do exactly what the UK did. I did exactly what China's do. I say, look, you know, I, I keep telling our clients, we're gonna every every now and then we Maria Bartiromo, the money honey, cannot get off of it. She cannot get off of the idea that China wants to be number one. My advice to the money, honey, is look, instead of complaining that China's number one, why don't we try doing what China does? Why don't we go in like China and try to stimulate our economy, try to foster full employment, try to build up our control of this industry or that industry? Why are we out here purposely self-destructing this country? I, and and, and, and I, I, honest to God, I don't, I don't see the logic behind this. You know, I, I simply don't see the logic behind. But on the same token, you got to have a president that simply cuts off any more public support for laziness or, or any, you know, this whole idea that you're going to get rid of. Uh, you're going to let them default. They're going to let them run through bankruptcy to get rid of their student loans. Those loans were always supposed to be non-dischargeable. It's the only reason Congress authorized them years mm -hmm. ago. Sure. And it's against the law. And it's rogue. It's, it's just a rogue it's the same president that blew up the pipeline, violating all kinds of law that's going to be overturned. But I would, I would roll, I would do exactly what the UK did. At the very least, if I was really serious about it, I would pause because I, and, and I agree, Judy Shelton agrees with me. They all agree with me. What you need to do at this point is you need to pause and let the supply chain begin to catch up with the work that the Federal Reserve has done. And, you know, just because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates doesn't mean that somebody's going to open a factory making blue logos for Ford tomorrow morning. 
it's going to take some time for somebody to make the blue logo so Ford can ship their cars. They're going to completely destroy the housing market. They completely destroy the car market. Any any market where you're loaning money is is just going to be a disaster. Well, you know, all of my son wants to come down and go to work for us. He can't get can't afford to get rid of his house in Massachusetts mm -hmm. because the difference in interest rates is going to mean he's going to have to, you know, buy several hundred thousand dollars less house. Sure. He's going to have a hard time finding a buyer. So mobility in America is, is drying up. Um, I got clients that are telling me that, you know, the, the, the all kinds of businesses, construction businesses of all kinds are having a hard time. Um, You've seen Rocket Mortgage offering some kind of a scam deal where you can go in and finance a house today. And if interest rates drop over the next few months, you could refinance it for some kind of discounted rate. I don't know what the offer is, but, you know, you got you got people scrambling. You got Ford offering cars at two point nine again. Uh, where where the and that's inflationary. That's inflationary on the high end because. What you got to do in order for Ford to subsidize interest rates down to 2.9, they're going to have to charge thirty, forty thousand dollars more than the car is worth uh, to the to the consumer, so that they can discount the the interest rate to the consumer. So so that's inflationary. Um, I, I, I see the whole thing working. I see the whole thing working at opposite ends of where the Federal Reserve wants to go. The only ones that this is going to hurt in the long run. It's going to be it's going to be stockholders, that's for sure, and it's going to be the lower income people that that, yeah, that live definitely. paycheck. If you're punching a clock, uh, if you live paycheck to paycheck, you're hurting, and you can thank your government for. It. And then you got the student I call Chris. Chris had all kinds of tax issues. He got him squared away yesterday. I say, oh, good news, Chris. Um, you're due for twenty thousand dollars of student loan um, reductions. By the way, that's taxable income. You're going to be taxed on that twenty thousand dollars as income. So really, I did. I haven't looked into it because it's so repulsive to me. The whole thing about it's so anti this country, which is you sign a piece of paper that you're going to pay something back, and now you're not because it's federal. Because it's a federal Gosh. forgiveness, it's considered income under federal law. So in his case, that's twenty five percent for each ten thousand. So that's five thousand dollars in taxes to forgive 20,000 in loans. Speaking of taxes, I'm still waiting on the taxation of Bitcoin to unwind. They're, they're really, they really haven't addressed all of this yet on, the, on well, Bitcoin. It's going to be worthless pretty soon. No, I understand the that. Is, but the good news is they'll be able to, they'll be able to carry over their losses at the rate of $3,000 a year. <laughs> for a long time. For a long, long for, time. For a very long time. Until the next scam comes around. So. It's um that one that one's been interesting to watch. I, I think the last time we're on it might have been at forty thousand or fifty thousand. I don't know, but um, you know, I look at it today. I think it's down again. It certainly isn't a contrarian um, place to put your money like like it was pitched. It's running straight with the markets. <laughs> so that goes back to sissy boy and semi effeminate, effeminate male Andrew Ross Sorkin. <laughs> bringing on the CEO of MicroStrategy week after week after week after week on CNBC. Oh, right? that's funny. And, and this guy's this guy's taking MicroStrategy money and taking corporate funds, converting those funds to cryptocurrencies, and then he's going out selling stock, bringing in the proceeds from the stock sales, buying more crypto. Uh, and the SEC is just sitting there with their finger going, it's okay with us. This road to perdition is okay with us. And and I don't know when that deal blows up. I, I you know I don't know where that guy is. I don't follow it that closely. But there's no there's no way that makes sense. The only way that makes sense is if he keeps buying more. But you know I I don't know how you're allowed to use corporate assets to buy fake money. Um, Marty, can you talk about bonds without your head popping off about BlackRock? If not, go ahead and let it pop off. I want to hear. I want to hear because you bonds? you said something so funny about BlackRock the last time as well. Well, BlackRock's just selling to people their crappy bonds. <laughs> well, I had so many people email me and go, what did he just say? I'm like, that's what he said? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, BlackRock's in the news over this thing in the UK yesterday. I, you know, I'd have to read, I'd have to actually read the, the internet to read it to you, but it's in my radio program. BlackRock's all over that stink pot. BlackRock has 
um, a lot of interest in pensions over there. They mm -hmm. use different phraseology than we use over here mm -hmm. for, for different names. Audience wouldn't know who these people are. But BlackRock, BlackRock threatened to call the notes due yesterday. If, if, the, wow. UK, if the UK proceeded with the, uh, with, with the uh, support of the guilt, and the, and the British have so many currencies, I don't even know what they all are. Uh, they were going to they were going to call their notes due, and so that's one of the reasons that the UK stopped yesterday. Actually, they did this before the UK announcement yesterday. So that's in the show. It's in the, there's a Wall Street Journal article on it. So you can you can bet that wherever there's evil and corruption, BlackRock's not far behind. <laughs> and and we get every time we do this about them. <laughs> We we get calls from clients saying I, I don't want anything to do with BlackRock. Give me something else. Well, they're all the same way. the I, The idea is that that BlackRock is a. You had a, then you were talking. You had Jim Cramer the other day or somebody talking about uh, ESG, which of course BlackRock mm -hmm. is the core of that. That's a complete otherwise. That's a complete scam in and of itself. And you know, environmental, social, and governance. And uh, BlackRock's fingerprints are all over that. Sure. Um, and this is, and, and so they're, they're large contributors to the Democrats and the goal is to, have to, uh, well, you're going to hate this because you're the annuity man. The That's okay. BlackRock's I'm, I'm, biggest I'm cool. goal. And well, this is, this is bad for your business because okay. BlackRock wants to run you out of the annuity business. BlackRock wants to put annuities in everybody's IRA. And I don't know, <laughs> you know, you start working at, uh, it's not, Starbucks. listen, it's not going to affect me because people are just like when they come to you they want the facts they come to me they want the facts it's i mean they're not going to just accept it now yes they want to sell those type of firms want to sell to the lower end of the market nothing against them to to instead of them putting it in a in a target date fund they put it in an annuity that's that's actually criminal in my opinion that's I just agree with garbage you. for I, I, anyone I, at 23 or 27 to put their money in a in a deferred income annuity for at, to pay out at age 50. That's the dumbest, most non-fiduciary thing I've ever heard in my life. I haven't I'm, taken my- I'm sure I I'm wrong. Taken, and I'm sure I'm wrong. I, I haven't taken my annuity test in a long number of years, but I, I, I thought at some point it was, it, you weren't, it was you wasn't suitable to sell them to anybody under 50. That's, that's what it, I always I tell right? people. Don't yeah. call me unless you're 50, please yeah. don't. And even then- you're a little, you're a little young, and they're talking about, yeah. If you buy this annuity at 22, what? <laughs> what are we talking about, man? And, and, and we look at their, we look at the alternatives for that. We look at the target date funds, which is the other biggest piece of scam. But the point, whole point was, BlackRock's got to have po political permission mm -hmm. to sell that stuff, to put that stuff in your 401k. BlackRock's got to have the government's permission. So, you know, and you notice today that what they did today with the budget is, uh, as last I heard, they they withdrew that measure where congressional representatives could not be invested in the stock market. Cor they pulled that off. Correct. The, uh, correct. Today. Correct. So, and that's you know, so Pelosi's Pelosi's husband can continue to make make less money. OK, here's one for you, Marty. I'm sure you're pretty happy about the eighty five thousand new IRS agents. Yes or no? I don't think we see them. I, I think there's um, okay. That's the bright spot. The bright spot is November eighth. The singular largest contributor to inflation, Joe Biden spending, should become neutered, should become hamstringed, and that should be, according to McCarthy, the first thing to go. The very first thing to go. I don't trust either party. Listen, as long as the Republicans have Mitt Romney and Lindsey Graham in the party, I'm like, whatever, man. <laughs> how, do, how do you how do you side with those two characters? Come on, that's that's insane. Who's going to win the presidency down the road two years from now, Marty Parlato? <sighs> I don't even know who's going to run. Um, your, are your two favorite people going to run? Who are they? That would be Biden and Trump. We have a lot of clients now. You know, I used to take a lot of heat. You know, you may know my my advertising guy, Les. I don't know if you know him sure. or not. Yeah. Les says, Marty, you got to stop bashing Trump. I said, well, he's got to stop doing stupid stuff. And then I'll stop <laughs> bashing Trump. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and the more I, 
you know, I, I stopped getting phone calls from clients saying stop bashing Trump. Most of them tell me now that they would rather the party move on. So if you had, if I had to guess now, it'd be DeSantis. Um, okay. DeSantis would be the next president. And um, versus versus the uh, the Ken doll from California. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I saw him today. He he's going to be the big bad guy. He's going to take it to the Republicans. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. You know, it'll, be, it'll be. Listen, I was just in San Francisco on business over the weekend this past weekend. I'm telling you right now. San Francisco is chaos. And, and I didn't believe it because I hadn't been there in a, in a few years, but I'm literally Marty stepping over human feces as I'm walking down through the best district of San Francisco, the shopping district. I, I couldn't believe it. I was, I was not assaulted is not the word that means that they laid hands on me, but I had conversations. So let me see good. if I, let me see I if talked I to a gladiator. I talked to all kinds of people. So let me see if I understand your complaint. Let me see if I understand your beef. Yes. You're okay. You're okay with people borrowing hundreds of thousands of dollars to finance student loans and not paying it back. But somebody accidentally poops on the street, that 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 makes you angry? I'm not I'm not I'm not okay with either one of those. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, will tell you, I will tell you that the uh, the poop on the streets a little bit more visceral and real um, you know, when you're there, but um I will tell you the best, and this is off the subject. So people hang in there with me because you know Marty and I, friends, and the, I've got to tell Marty this story, even though it's on air and recorded. The best street, the best street thing I've ever seen. You got these people; they'll play drums, and some play well, and some rap, and some play the saxophone. So one guy was he was the most buff guy I've ever seen. He had a pair of jeans, African American, no shirt, shaved head, and um, guy walks up to him. He goes. Give me a hundred push-ups. Gave him like 20 bucks. The dude drops right there, Marty. Does hundred of the most cleanest, perfect push-ups I've ever seen. So of course I'm like, okay, that's I'm that's pretty good. Because after that, of course, you got to take me to the hospital. Because first of all, I couldn't do a hundred push-ups in a row, not like that. I watched this guy do at least 500 push-ups in about a seven to 15 minute time period, and he wasn't breathing, Marty. And I'm thinking to myself, that's the best gig I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like that. I was mesmerized by how this person could be in such shape. You, and you know, he hadn't eaten in a while and whatever. He was, he was probably drinking. <laughs> it was great. I know that has nothing to do with fun with annuities or markets, but I'm just saying you have to look at life in the lens of just look pure enjoyment. You got to find some happiness in life. And that, Marty, I found it. On the streets of San Francisco with Mr. Push Up, he well, can do it, man. We 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 had a little <laughs> fun on the cruise. We got to go to Turks and Caicos. Nice. Which, um, as far as I'm concerned, would make a good prison colony. That's about, uh, and especially now that it's been blown over by the hurricane again. Got to see the the <laughs> mules or the donkeys or whatever rolling around, and you know, <laughs> that, that, those are the small things in life that you can look forward to. We got oh, our really? new. Uh, Gemini private client portal, golden mugs. Yeah, for, for people, our most of our clients, most of the people that are listening to this on podcast platforms, they're, they're actually working out, Marty. They're driving cars and Porsches and on Pelotons. He he held up a really cool gold mug that I'm well, sure think of, think of the golden EIB microphone and then think of a 10 ounce <laughs> coffee cup. <laughs> it's the same. No it's doubt. Same. All right, we're, we're, we're coming to the end, as I always do, Marty, with my celebrity guest host, and you are a celebrity, is, I, is the mic drop moment where I hand you the mic and you, you've been wowing the crowd anyway, but this is it, man. You get one last minute to wow them and tell them, walk away, and they, they end the podcast and go, man, that was fantastic. I'm going to count you down. Mic drop moment, Martin Parlato, lighthouseretirement.com in five, four, three, two, one. Go. Kathy Woods at ARC is right. If, as Fed Chair Evans said this week, the sanctions should be over in the first quarter, the market is supposed to start looking forward. You're supposed to start buying this market in anticipation of things getting better. As I look on my screen, LAM research is up from 365 to over 370 at the close. So a little bit of buying must have come into the market at the end. You got to do, it's, it's, it's hell to be a retirement client. And, and, let, and, and Stan will tell you, it's never been easy to be a retirement client. Mm -mm. But if you're an investor, 
You just got to hold your nose and own great stocks and hope the market comes to you. If you're an income client, well, that's what they make annuities for. And that's what they mm -hmm. make bonds for. And um, stands perfectly capable of helping you in, in all of those regards. But um, that's it. Hang in there. November 8th, right around the corner. That is the infamous Marty Martin, Marty Parlato, lighthouseretirement.com. One of the premier one-on-one -on -one money managers you'll ever encounter. If you don't try to hire him, I don't know what's wrong with you. He's a fantastic dude. I really enjoy it. Marty, thanks so much for joining us. And I want to thank everybody on the podcast, both on the Fun with the Nudies YouTube channel and all the major platforms. We will see you next time. Bye.